number 41, Nate McKeegan. Starting lineup for Nesopi. At guard, number six, Emmett Hurstall. At guard, number 15, Garrett Pack. At guard, number 25, Garrett Passing. At forward, number 17, Graham Whitney. And at forward, number 51, Carson Leary. That is your Neshapi squad. Bill Moore is the head coach for Neshapi Team 2. Now for Proctor in your traditional burgundy uniforms. Number one, Nick Gustamaccio. Gustamaccio. Gustamaccio coming out. I think I nailed it. Number two, Sam Tillon. Number 22, Curtis Thomason. Number 51, Braden Fox. Third lineup for Proctor. At guard, number three, Shane Kodobanski. game is now should be in the white uniforms with the red trim taking on Proctor we got a foul called four seconds into the contest John McKernan Greg Grenier are the officials for this ball game volunteer officials volunteer scorekeepers volunteer time clock people volunteer people running concessions this is all built on volunteers this is West Rutland Booster Club and people and there's the steal Proctor looking for the first points of the basketball game on a defensive takeaway he'll put it up and get it whoa that was fast that was Hanson, Jordan Hanson. 2 nothing Proctor, so Neshebe with the basketball. Bassett with the basketball, number 25. His long pass picked off by Proctor. Fed to Hanson, he'll make the grab, fading away, and got it. Bechet with the assist, and we're gonna have a timeout taken by Neshebe. And man, did they get, in what, 34 seconds, they've been blitzed here by Proctor. It's 4 nothing. the Proctor squad with the lead, and Bill Moore, the head coach, will tell you about Neshby right now. They have Lennon Philo, number 7, Emmett Thurston, number 15, Jarrett Patch, number 21, Derek Bassett, number 25, Graham Whitney, number 41, Nate McKeegan, number 44, and 51, Carson Leary, and that is the entire roster for the Neshby team number 2 squad. Neshby obviously with two teams in the tournament. And they're looking to just kind of settle down as Proctor, up 4-0. We're in the first quarter to play. There are six minute quarters, and there's overtime if necessary. And again, 25, Derek Bassett. I believe this is 25, but we've got the jersey numbers on the front side, and that is Bassett with the basketball. He tried to weave his way inside. He wanted to hand the ball off to his teammate, and he will get it over there now, and there we go, a foul called. Yeah, and we'll get the foul called. That foul on Bechet, number 12 of Proctor. And I don't have a 17, unfortunately, for Neshebe. So I'll work on that. I don't have a 17, so I don't know his name. That's going to be Neshebe along the baseline. They'll put the shot up, hit the side of the backboard. Ball will come back, taken backward by Neshebe. You want to bring the ball all the way back. That's a three ball. That's a long distance ball. Another game, two. He hammered it in there. I believe it was Thurston, number 15. Hanson likes it, fires it, no good. Rebound will come down to Proctor. He'll turn on the run and kiss it off the window and in. 
As that was Farley putting the basket up and in. 6-2 Proctor and oh yeah, this no dragging your feet in this game. Everybody getting after it early. You want to give the ball back. Thurston will take it off from his foot, can control the basketball work against Bechet. Wants to go baseline. Bechet wouldn't surrender the ball baseline, and the pass will come back now. And going to foul called. Yeah, number 25 going inside there was Bassett. That's so Bassett. Number 25 was fouled. There's no shot yet. That's three fouls, though, on Proctor already as a team. A minute and a half in the contest. That's Bechet there defensively did a good job. Bassett, foul score, it's free, picked up, and Bechet going full throttle forward, going to take it all the way up. You don't kick the ball back to his teammate. He's closed down. He'll give it to his teammate off the window and in. Hansen with the bucket. I'll tell you, points are coming fast. They've combined for 10 points apiece. It's 8 to 2 Proctor over, and that should be team number 2 in Bassett. Got to protect that basketball. Has the ball tipped, and it's going to be taken out of there by Proctor. That's number three for Proctor. Protovansky, Protovansky got the steal. Now get the ball up ahead, and that's a little hard off the window. Look at the offensive rebound. Up and in. I tell you, it happens so quick. Sometimes you can't even get the numbers down before this game. <laughs> it's 10 to 2 Proctor. Into the corner, and that should be, again, just trying to settle things down right now. That ball's going to be stripped from behind, picked back up. That should be looks, and that ball picked off. Bechet with that speed. Bechet going to take it up and in, and got it. Richard Bechet with the basket. And we're going to have a that should be timeout as it's 12 to 2. Proctor with the lead, and they'll gather around their head coach. And is it a full timeout? Nope, it's a 30 second timeout. So Proctor, real quickly, has Braden Fox, number 51, on the roster, Nick Gustamaccio, number one. Sam Tilden wears two. Shane Protovansky is number three. Jordan Hansen, number 10. Richard Bechet, 12. Kyle Miles, number 13. Curtis Tomlinson, 22. And Reed Farley, 32. That is Proctor. I'll tell you what, they started quick and they have kept it quick as they have just motored to a 10 point lead, 12 to 2 over Neshebe. And Neshebe calling their second time out of the first quarter alone. And so again, it was a full timeout taken as you're watching the Ed Glazik Youth Basketball Tournament from West Rutland, Vermont. And I guess they're going to take the full, full timeout here. So I'll tell you, Philo is number 7, Thurston 15, 21 is Patch. This is Neshebe's roster for you. I don't have a 17, I have to work on that. Bassett's 25, Whitney 41, 44 McKeegan, 51 Leary. And we're going to have number 15, Thurston, bring the ball up. He's going to run the point right now for Nashabe, team number two. Oh, look at that. Boucher tipped the ball away, and Boucher will go up, and no. Hey, a good defensive steal, we have a travel call on the place. This ball will go over to Nashabe. And so we will have Nashabe with the basketball. They're just looking to settle down right now. There's a lot of basketball left to play. You see the good defense being played there by Proctor. Oh, right there, Bechet with yet another steal. Bechet up and got the finish. No. Hansen fires. No good. Bechet with the rebound. Turns, fires, and no. Look at the chances they had on the second opportunities, third opportunities there, and we'll stay at 12 to 2. As Thurston killed the dribble. Look at Bechet take the ball away. Great hand eye coordination by Bechet. He's got to be tired just running up and down the floor. There's the putback. No. I'll tell you right now, this game would be just about over if they made those chances. And Bechet sliding along the floor. There's the grab and Farley. No. Look at the offensive rebounds. My goodness. There must be a lid on that basket. I'll tell you what. I have seen barrages before, but nothing like that. I lost track of how many chances they had, and there's the steal by Proctor, and that's going to be taken out of there by Miles up ahead, and there's the basket as Farley will get the basket, and 14 to 2 now, and they need somebody to bring the ball into play, and we'll have Thurston come back and take the long pass, and yeah, just off from the fingertips, almost another steal. As Protovansky was there to almost get the steal. And the ball taken out of bounds. 
I don't have a six on my roster either for Neshapi. Well, the book's kind of useless. They gave me, nobody's on it. Up and no good. Ball slapped out of bounds, and it should be Proctor basketball. Leary slapped the ball out of bounds. I'm not sure why he didn't grab it, but. So it's going to be Proctor with no pressure in the backcourt. They'll have the basketball, and again, 14 to two. They've scored 14 first quarter points at the sixth grade level. And there's still a minute 22 to go in this quarter. This Tomlinson will slide the ball along the baseline and it's going to stay down and in. The Tomlinson 22 try to get the pass down inside. Hansen's going to take the ball out of bounds. Hansen looks, finds, teammate puts it up and no. Rebound, it's going to be a one and done this time as jump ball will be called as Farley got in there and tied up Leary. Farley of Proctor, and Leary, of course, of Nesha be team number two. And they'll bring it in to Farley, open, and got it. Tell you what, there was no doubt about that shot when he left his hand. It was a beautiful looking spin and rotation on the ball. 16 to two, Proctor. As Nesha be been just trying to re survive this first quarter. And the shot just did miss. They'll give it off to Protovansky. Protovansky slows it down, lets the offense get into their pattern. He'll set up the play. It's a 2-3 zone being played right now. Farley got fouled down inside. Coming across to hack him was Graham Whitney. And there's no shots coming up. Nobody's in a bonus situation yet. Obviously he wasn't shooting the basketball, so it'll just go out of play to Proctor. See, again, look at that perimeter. Protovansky will step back, and no. I tell you, they reversed the ball very nicely. The Proctor squad did. 26 seconds to go, and you can see the ball raced into the front court by Bassett. Bassett got it stuck on his hip up off the glass. A wild shot, no good, and then he can't save it. Bassett hustling after the basketball, stepped out of bounds on the inline, and it'll become Proctor's ball with 18.2 seconds to go. And what's been a just a ripping first quarter for Proctor. They wanted, yeah, they're looking for somebody to release off the screen to go to the ball. Farley never did. Bassett going long distance gets the pass up front along the baseline. Time down to two seconds, one second, and that will go out of play at the buzzer. And man, it was an all Proctor first quarter, 16 to two over Neshapi, team number two at the Glossick tournament. You're watching tomorrow's high school players, tomorrow's high school stars today at the Glossick Tournament on Munger Vision on Channel 15, Peg TV. That should be, got a long way to go here. They got a lot to make up. There's Bassett will go back and get the basketball. The program that I've been given doesn't have half of these Nesha players on it, so I apologize for that, but I, I can't name, I can't name a player that I don't know the name and number of, so. I'll do my best at halftime, but I try to get the next game in line. Podovansky will bring the ball out of bounds for Proctor, and Fox also back there. Made the touch, brought it back to Podovansky. He'll go on and look at the good crisp passing. He reversed the basketball. Fox with the touch. He'll go down inside to Leary. The pass is a tad bit high. Fox will pick it up. Left-handed shot up, no good. A little off the mark. Ball bounces around. He'll come down to Neshby. Thurston with the basketball, and then a jump foul will be called. As Reed Farley, or Farley, I'm sorry, I've been calling right. Reed Farley will get in there and tie the basketball up. And so Bassett will not be facing a full court press. He'll bring the ball down and with 5.23 to go in the half, 16 to two Proctor and almost a steal by Hansen. Bassett up, found an opening and oh, just missed the conversion. Up, no good and rebound will come down to Farley and the ball on the floor and Bassett there and we're gonna have a jump ball call. That's the way you get after both players. Farley and Bassett doing a good job of getting down there and going after it. And Protovansky with some words from the bench. The Shane Protovansky. I believe that's Hanson on that side. One of the problems I have getting old, Farley will get it. It's just that they only have the jersey numbers on one side, not on the front and back, so I have to wait till they turn around to see their numbers. Thurston to Bassett, and they almost turned the ball over by throwing the ball in and out of bounds like that. That's a rocket fired up front, and then Farley reached in. Farley reached down, and Farley made the steal. 
Back to Protovansky, he's told to push the basketball, and he does. He crosses over and finds an opening. Baseline, they set, they fire, they don't convert this time. Rebound controlled by, well, it's controlled momentarily by Neshebe, and then Farley tied him up. And so Thurston and Bassett will be in the backcourt for Neshebe, team number two. And again, no pressure in the backcourt by Proctor. They're up 18 to 2 over Neshebe. And I'm not sure what they're going to call there. I guess it was a foul. So Hansen called for the foul. Jordan Hansen. See so Protovansky on the ball defensively, and he'll throw the ball in the thirst, and he'll go off his hands to Farley. Farley up ahead to Protovansky. Oh, what an unselfish play to Hansen. What an unselfish play. You don't get to see enough of that at any level. Farley, no. Rebound action. Tenacious down inside. Proctor had it, lost it. Bassett and Thurston on the same team fight for it. And then Hansen's going to pick up the fouls. He came down on the arm with the hack. And so Neshebe will take over the basketball, slide out, down by 16 with 3.58 to go in this, that can't be right. We can't still be in the first quarter. Don't even switch it, we're in the second quarter. About to say they're good, but. You can see Bassett just trying to find an open spot on the floor. Right now, that should be spacing very far off on the team. They're all congested down there. Yeah, they're looking. That was Fox trying to go up ahead to Gustamaccio. So Gustamaccio couldn't quite catch up to it. It'll become a turnover. One of the rare turnovers on Proctor here in his first half of play. Bassett sets it up for the crossover. Bassett worked it down, down deep, but couldn't do anything with it when he got down low. And now they're going to circle all the way back outside to the elbow. And they're going to call it jump ball. 22 for Proctor got in there. Tomlinson tied it up, and it's going to become Proctor basketball after that good effort by Tomlinson. As Bechet is going to run the point now. And what an impressive opening quarter Bechet had. Number 12 out there for Proctor. Tomlinson looks for Bechet. He'll get the basketball back. He'll swing it around, and it's going to be Fox with the touch. Fox will duck inside, get to the free throw line, opens up, and no good. Rebound, Gustamaccio had it, still has it, he'll flick it out, and Tomlinson, a little strong. Weak side rebound, put up, foul. Oh. As I believe, that was Kyle Miles. Yeah, Miles got fouled, number 13 for Proctor, and it'll be Miles going to the line. Huh? Oh, I, I know. Some discussion down at the scores table. There's a baffled looking, no, okay. baffled looking group of officials down there. It goes over Fox and they'll turn fire and oh, just off the mark. Proctor with the push and the lead, bring it down the floor. Bechet, three ball on it, gonna be a little short that time. Fox will hustle over there, will go out of bounds. The shot, your original shot generated from Curtis Tomlinson. 18 to two Proctor over Neshebe, team number two. And Bassett brings it all the way inside, goes to the left-handed shot off the window, follows up his own shot, gets the rebound. He's in a crowd of maroon jerseys down there, needs some help. He's looking to kick the ball back out. Thurston will make the save up top between the circles. Thurston looking to make the move around Fox, and then Bechet came out with the help defense. Bechet, more than helped, he stole the basketball, and Bechet up and fouled and counted. Bechet with the steal, the bucket, got fouled, going to the line. Yeah, and the basket is good, and Bassett will pick up the foul. And that stops the clock with 2.13 to go in a 20 to 2 ball game. And Proctor and Neshby, I gotta believe that these two teams met earlier in the season on the sixth grade circuit. And that's gonna be 
off the mark. Look at the rebound. Up and Miles will give it back to Tomlinson. Up, no good. Weak side rebound, this time controlled by Neshebe. Bassett into the front court, will cross over. Oh, and he got it up. He muscled that shot up and in, Bassett. On the trail, we'll bring it back around to Tomlinson. He wants to go down inside. Gustamaccio, no. Just missed the basket. You see them want to go down along the baseline. That was sealed off that option. And Tomlinson and yeah. We have a timeout taken by Nashaby before they lost possession. They're down 20 to 4 in the second quarter. A minute 31 to go in the half. That's, that's a good timeout. They needed possession. Oh, Bashay with the steal. Bashay pass, pass at front court. Bashay, yes. What a good looking player Bashay is. Now you can watch the early action in the tournament. And like I picked out like the Manchester Dorset team and Proctor. Now I tried, they were both excellent teams, very well coached, but you kind of look at Proctor and think, well, they have big numbers, they could wear down. That should be, or wear down Dorset. Less than a minute to go now and it's opening. Oh, they had to call that. Yeah, he tomahawk chopped it from buying a lot of arm. Yeah, and it's going to be out of bounds on the baseline to Proctor. It's Graham Whitney coming in the ballgame now for Nash. Should be number 41. Yeah, so it'll be Proctor on the baseline. That's yes, he gets set to bring the ball on the play. It's Fox along the baseline. He looks for Boucher. He'll make the catch, the shot, and no. The rebound comes down to Neshebe, and they don't, yeah, good job. Oh, oh. I didn't see a double dribble, but he got the ball, went to the floor, and tried to dribble, and they called double dribble on him. Fox, no. Foul. Non-shooting foul, I believe. I'm waiting for the clock too. They're looking. It is the seventh. Okay, so it is one and one now, as that foul is against Proctor, and there's only 45 seconds left in a half. But it does become the one and one for the rest of this half for Nashville. So they'll be at the line, and I tell you, they're having problems scoring points from the field. It's pretty obvious how important these free throws are for them. So they'll step up to the line and down 22 to six. That shot up and no. Bassett kept the ball alive. It's going to come back to Boucher. And Boucher will go behind. Look at that. Behind the back. Grab that and jump ball. Call everybody going after that ball like you're supposed to. Yeah, they're going to put Nashby side out right in front of the Proctor bench. Well, i got to tell you, this is an impressive looking Proctor group. Ball fake put up and just a little short. It's going to be out of bounds. Last touch by Nesheby. And it's going to be Proctor basketball. They'll have 32 seconds left to work with here in the first half of play. And Boucher will call the play out and his snap the pass off. Went out from his teammate's foot. He traveled. That went off Tomlinson's foot. Right back to Boucher, but he traveled unfortunately. And it'll be a turnover. The ball will go back to Nesheby. That's Podovansky at the scores table, but I'm not sure if he'll get into the ball game. Bassett works his way down to the free throw line. He wants to duck up underneath, puts a shot up. That might have been blocked from behind. It's going to be saved by Neshebe. It comes back to Gustamaccio. He looks for Boucher and finds him. And foul with 5.6 seconds to go. It's going to be the fifth team foul. Yeah, and so Podovansky will come in for Boucher, and that's going to be the change for Proctor. And Protovansky will come back. He'll take the ball out of bounds. He's right in front of the scores table here at the Hinchy Gymnasium. Four seconds. Tomlinson up and weak side rebound. It'll count. Up and in at the buzzer. Oh, what a great job at the buzzer by Proctor as they'll have the big lead going into the half over Nashaby, team number two. 24 to 6, the Phantoms with the lead. 
Oh, hectic during halftime for me. I did not get the rest of the numbers for the Nashville team number two squad. And I apologize for that. That should be playing that 2 3 zone defense. Prax will come out. And Protovansky with the ball. He'll go back to Bechet. He'll go in the corner. That's going to be up. And an open look. No good. Weak side rebound will be ripped out of there by Nashby. They keep it alive. They'll find Thurston. Thurston over the midcourt logo to the top of the arc. We'll put it up and try to use the window to bank it in. Bechet with the rebound. And it's up and down the floor. Running gun basketball. Bechet to his teammate up and no. He got it off to Hanson. Hanson tried a little shovel shot. Hanson will dive for the ball. And go out of bounds. Great effort by Hanson. In the corner of the Hinchy Gym will be Nashby with the basketball. And he'll come back. Wide open was Bechet. Stands at the elbow and says, why not? He'll be off the mark. Farley trying to get it. Bechet will follow his own shot up and make it. Bechet. That was a pretty good job. And Bassett and company down by 20 at 26-6. They need to put together a run. That's going to go off from Bechet's foot. Out of bounds. It'll stay with Neshebe. Again, the Glossic tournament. A huge, huge tournament for youth basketball. One of the best tournaments in all the eastern United States. Thurston with the grab, went up in the air, had the ball slapped away. Hanson with the steal, looking to go coast to coast. Hanson up, and Hanson a little off the mark this time. Rebound, it's a one and done, and here comes Neshebe. Neshebe into the front court, and the Bechet there defensively, and the ball, the pass is behind, and it's an easy pick for Hanson. He'll stop, eight-footer, got it. Jordan Hanson with the basket. 28 to six now, this one's on the verge of running away from Neshebe. This Neshebe squad has two teams in the tournament. This is team number two. I haven't seen team number one yet. Well, look at Bassett backed him up and went baseline. There's the putback, and I think we got shots coming up. We'll let Mr. Grenier make it official, but I think we'll have some free throws. Two shots, yes. And so Neshebe heading to the free throw line is. This is Carson Leary, number 51. So Leary will be up and a little off the mark with that one. And so Leary trying to save this one with 4.16 to go in the third quarter. Got that one. Nice adjustment by Leary. And that's Farley bringing it into Bechet. And Bechet has just been a dominant player out there today for Proctor. Provansky to Hanson back to Bechet. They run the weave up top. Oh, they work at baseline to Farley. What a beautiful play. That's, that's a team. That's teamwork. That's, that's team basketball. I think we've got an SUB timeout. Yes, we're going to have a full timeout taken by an as they're looking up a mountain right now at 30-7 to, to Proctor. So Bassett back at the ball game. They got Thurston in the back court with them. And I, and I say it every game, and I do mean it. Bigger leads can disappear in less time. So that's be though. They've, they've got to put a run together. They've got to string together four or five baskets here. And that's going to be hard. This is a very good Proctor squad. Not only offensively are they gifted, but they're very good defensively. And they run the floor hard, and they have great team chemistry. And there's Bechet with the steal. Going to take it up, and no. Ball on the floor, Bechet will tip it to the corner, chase it down, they'll go after it hard, he'll save it to his teammate, that shot up, off the rim, no good, and look at Protovansky up and foul, tremendous action. And two shots coming up for Protovansky. The foul on Bassett. Well, confident players pl are, look a lot quicker, because they know what they're doing ahead of time, and that's what practice looks like, and I'm very confident, very quick. Protovansky, no. Can we get another one? Now Whitney, Graham Whitney, 41, coming in for Neshebe. He'll replace Leary. And that'll be off the front of the rim, no good. 
Podovanski got his own rebound, put it up, and I think he's going back to the line just so quick. And it is two shots. So Podovanski back at the line for Proctor's sixth grade squad. Shame Podovanski looks, coils, fires, no. Well, he'll try again here to salvage one. He's 0 for 3 from the line here in the third quarter. Well, that'll just be a smidging off the mark. As Farley hits the floor hard for Proctor. He's a little slow to get up, but he seems to be all right. Thurston got the ball away. Knocked down by Miles, I believe. Farley with the basketball. And he'll look for the trailer, which is Provansky. To Boucher. He'll pull it back out between circles, go to the elbow, get the ball back, and explodes through the center of the paint. Miles had a piece of it, and Boucher fouled. I, I think also shots. On the arm, two shots. They have to wait till the second. There's four subs coming in for Proctor. They have to wait till the second shot. Tomlinson, 22. Fox, 51. Gustamaccio, number one. And Tilden, Sam Tilden, number two, coming in for Proctor. Now, yeah, they're going to be four new subs, and the only, the only person staying in from the original five on the floor right now will be Boucher. And that's going to be a violation. Didn't hit the rim. It happens to the best of them. And so again, Thurston and Bassett. And that's Thurston with the basketball. Down 23 in the third quarter with 2.48 to go in the third quarter of play from the Glasgow Tournament 2009. Thurston jacks it up. No good. Rebound will be taken out of there. Bashay up ahead to Gustamaccio. Gustamaccio to the backboard. Up. No good. Bashay will get the rebound. Turn fire. Kiss it off the glass and in. Now start the other end with Tilden getting a touch on the ball for Proctor. And they are have been teams that you can watch early in a tournament and go, oh yeah, semi-finalists, Final Four team. I kind of got the feel for this Proctor squad. They have depth. They play very sound defense. They're very unselfish offensively. And that'll go out of bounds. Thurston tried to wheel to the hole and oh, a lot of frustration out there on that should be side. And they're going to allow the substitution to come in for Neshebe. I don't have a name or a number, so. As Thurston's going to sit down and take a breather. 32 to 7 right now. They run that weave up top. Fox with the touch. He'll give the ball back. Bechet with the crossover got through the paint. The ball was knocked away by Bassett. Bechet got the ball back and an almost. Made the shot falling down. Bassett, which chase it down. There is the shot. Oh, danced off the rim, no good. Last touch by Whitney of Nashville. Goes out of bounds. Leary, 51, coming in for Nashville. Team number two now. Get no pressure in the back court from Nashville. Of course, you look at the feeder program. You know what Proctor Varsity boys have done over the last decade. They've won, you know, just more recently, in the last four years, they've won four ch consecutive state championships. Now you look at their feeder program dominate here, and you're like, oh my goodness. What do they feed them out there in Proctor that makes them such good basketball players? Leary. Well, he could have taken a step to the basket and made a layup. He'd take a shot instead and missed off the mark. Mache will go behind the back, and Tomlinson, ball fake, baseline, Got pushed from behind. That's what created the travel, was the push from behind. And the practice basketball on the baseline out of bounds. Thurston will come back in the ball game for Nashville. Well, I'll tell you what, Nashville is playing hard. They are playing hard, but sometimes you just run into those, a better team. There has to be a better team on the floor every single game. And without taking anything away from Nashville, obviously Proctor's that team right now. Leary. Wanted to go baseline. Bechet got back and took away the baseline. That's great defense. Look at that defense by Bechet. He made the steal. Gets the ball ahead to Gustamaccio. One more pass. Fox hopping on one foot. Got caught for the travel. 
I'll tell you, that is unselfish. That is unselfish. Now, Gustamacho is going to be okay, but he kind of jammed his knee up going to the floor, and he's going to be taking on the ball game. And Protovansky coming in number three right now. Shane Protovansky in there to replace Gustamacho. The guys with the two longest names on the roster replace each other. Well, I got to tell you the truth, those names scared the heck out of me years ago, but there's a Gustamacho on the Proctor Girls team that I covered. And uh, I've, I don't know, I've just got that name down. That rolls off my tongue, Gustamacho. Protovansky, Leary fires it up. Look at the battle for the rebound. Tilden will all at the pass. 16 seconds to go in the quarter. And that's going to be a foul on the pass. As Protovansky got the ball up ahead to Tomlinson, but it'll be sign out to Proctor. 32 to 7, the Phantoms with the lead. Bechet with the pass off and a shot off the window almost up and in. Tilden got a piece of it, couldn't control it. And Bechet tipped it. It'll come down to Leary. He'll get the pass up ahead to Tomlinson. One second and that's it. The shot won't count. It went in. It won't count. They can do nothing wrong today, Brockter. As Protovansky will have it waved off, but it looked cool. And they're going to have a 32-7 lead heading into the fourth quarter play as they're going to be moving on deeper into the Glossic Tournament 2009. Leary with the basketball. Now, you might think I'm a little premature in saying that Proctor's heading in deeper into this tournament, but barring a tremendous comeback, which would be a record-setting comeback, great basket, great basket. He cried, that's a violation. He crossed over the inline. What happened there was he didn't expect the press. So Neshebe. Looking and getting the ball into Leary. Leary will turn away from Tilton. He'll try it again. He tried that little underhand shuffle shot. Bass it up and got it. Bass it with the bucket. So four points in a row now by Neshapi, team number two. And Boucher will roll the ball forward and it'll be out of bounds off from Neshapi out of bounds. We'll stay with Proctor. And so Coach Morgan wanting a timeout and he's going to make some substitutions here with 529 left in the basketball game. Hansen in the ball game number 10. He'll get the ball on the play for Proctor. He'll go it over to Boucher. And that timeout, pretty much I interpreted that timeout by Proctor was, no, let's let's not get sloppy. Let's tighten it up and play fundamentally sound basketball again. Farley will back up, drive the paint, give it off. Protovansky up, and Protovansky will spin it off the glass, not in. Boucher, eight-footer, no. Tipped and controlled by Neshebe. They'll slow it down and let the defenders get by them. And now traveled. Yeah, he knows it. He knows it. He got happy feet there as he got dancing. And Protovansky will take the ball of bounds right in front of the scorer's table here at West Rutland. They'll throw over the top of Bassett and be caught by Boucher. He'll come back to Protovansky. Fake the two-point shot, go inside, and tell you what, that is so good, making that extra pass, so unselfish. Hanson tried to save it, and he'll hit the support on the back side of the backboard, and that's going to be out of bounds. See Bassett want to go into the front court to Thurston, and Thurston will spin away from the pressure and play against Boucher. And Boucher will come out and crowd him. Boucher, with that good quickness, will come over, and I think he actually got a piece of the basketball. Weak side rebound will be chased down by Bassett. Bassett with the dribble will bring it back. He's looking for Leary to screen, and it didn't happen. Leary a little tight to him. That ball will go down along the baseline. We're going to have Portovansky with the foul. Again, volunteer officials, they've done a great job here in this basketball game. Greg Grenier and Johnny McKernan. And so we have substitutions coming in the ballgame for Neshebe. Yeah, come in, and that's going to be the number 41, Whitney, and Graham Whitney. Looking for Thurston, and that ball will go out of bounds. And it's going to stay with Neshebe. So Boucher, I'll set the defending inbounds pass. And that's going to be picked out by Protovansky. See him turn, look down the floor immediately, see if any teammate had released to throw the long pass to. All the way, and shots coming up as Boucher saw the opening in the middle of the paint and 
attack the basket and that's one thing everybody on this practice side has done and they've been very confident but aggressive and they've attacked the basket. And again there'll be more and more action coming to you from the Glossic Tournament 2009. And will miss. As Bassett back in the ball game for Nesh, we have a very brief rest. And another team to watch in this tournament is the Christ the King sixth grade squad. They finished their regular season undefeated, won the Rutland Rec tournament, and come in here very highly regarded as one of the top four teams in this tournament to make it, you know, top one of the top four to finish in the finals. Here comes Protovansky, fouled and, oh, almost pulled off a three-point play, so Protovansky, he'll be on the line to take a couple free throws. And again, this will not wrap it up for basketball, the classic tournament. It's, it's, it is one of my favorite things to do of all the things I videotape, but I still have, to my knowledge, unless I've been terminated, I have the Glas... Uh, I'm doing the Glasic. I'm just getting the senile now. I have the Bandits AAU basketball tournament coming up, and in all the years past I've covered it. I assume I'm going to be covering it now. And then the Thunderbirds Bugiani Women's AAU tournament, I assume that I'll be doing that. And that really ends basketball. And I guess set for baseball, softball, and I think Legion ball. I don't know. I mean, I plan on it. Whether or not the new regime down there lets me, that's a whole other deal, but... And right, see, see the difference as Graham Whitney trying to turn the corner and lost the ball out of bounds, but Proctor very orchestrated in their offense. A lot of motion, a lot of screens, a lot of technical basketball stuff going on. Protovansky, that was knocked away from him, and yeah, that's why there's no call on that. That ball was knocked in the backcourt. Fox spins, gives the ball up. Gustamaccio got it. Gustamaccio with the basket. I just like to say the name now, and I now I know how to say it. 34 to 11, Proctor. They led. Oh, a running one-hander by Thurston, and he'll drain it. Proctor led 12 to 2 midway through the first quarter, and they have never looked back. As Bassett able to stay, keep his balance, and play defense against Protovansky. And you couldn't see it because the big ref there, Grenier, was in the way. But there's a foul being called. And Protovansky is going to take the ball out of bounds. It's still three minutes to go in this basketball game. And nope, I looked up the clock just like the ref did at the same time. It is the eighth team foul, so it'll be the one on one for Protovansky. And so the front end, the first of the one on one, that could also be the only if he misses it. And it will become the only. Tilden got to the ball, and he's at too tough an angle to put the shot up. Protovansky will step to the hole and miss it. Again, they attack the basket. Fox to the floor will kick it off to Gustavaccio. Protovansky, oh, look at that pass. See that one extra pass? The spacing on the floor is extremely impressive for Proctor. Tilden, no. One more time, yes. Tilden with the bucket. Sam Tilden with the basket. Yeah, there's a violation on Nashville, and they'll turn the ball over. They're on that stack play, Proctor will. Protovansky, no. There's a big battle along the, right below the basket for the basketball, and it's Tomlinson that came up with it. He'll go down to Gustamacho. He'll put it up, jack it up, and yes, it'll go. Gustamacho with his second bucket in a couple minutes here. 38-13, Proctor on their way to the next round of the Lazic basketball tournament. Traveled, yeah. Thurston lost his balance, went to the floor, and that's a travel. And it's unfortunate because he's played a solid ball game out there for Neshebe. They're going to come off to Fox. Fox came back to help out on that press. He's going to throw a long distance to Tilden, and Tilden there with Gustamaccio. They're both tight proximity to each other, and it's going to be a rebound by Proctor. And they'll slide it off to Tomlinson. Got it. They're all getting in the scoring act now. Forty to thirteen. 
I have done high school games where the winning team has not scored 30. Thurston off the window, off from Tilden's hands to the floor to Gustamacho. Up ahead to Protovansky. Protovansky looking for Fox down the floor. Will let it bounce to him, make the catch, curl, get inside, put the shot up, no good. Weak side rebound by Tomlinson will have it. Oh, yeah. One of the teams to watch, I guess now you know, as the tournament goes on, will be this Proctor squad. Bassett will ball fake, penetrate, drive the hole, put it up, and no. Great move, though, by Bassett. Up and no. Rebound down to Proctor. It was Gustamaccio with it off to Prolovansky. Up ahead to Fox. Fox looks for it, has his pass picked off. He's trying to get to Tomlinson. Tomlinson will release the pressure defensively now, and they'll have Thurston bring the ball down with a minute to go in the contest. See him pull it out between circles and everything kind of settle down around him. Nice catch on the pass to the elbow. Showed him the ball and brought it back out, and... It's going to be picked off by Protovansky. He'll split the defense, throw over the top to Fox. Fox, once on the dribble, no good off the side of the basket. Tilden has it, wings it over to Gustamaccio, gives up the shot. Protovansky will kiss it off the glass and in. That's unselfish. That's tremendously unselfish. 34 seconds, and Neshebe with the basketball. And Neshebe calling the timeout. So that will happen with 28 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. So we'll see what the timeout has uh, developed for a play here. As Neshby wanted to drop a play and execute it, and there! I don't know if they drew that up. That was a tough shot, but he got it. Tomlinson will bring it back to Protovansky. 17 seconds, and the clock winding down. They'll get it ahead to Tilden. He'll catch fire and just miss the shot. Tomlinson scramble for the ball down inside. The whistle blowing. We have bodies all over the floor. And it's going to be Fox taking the ball out of bounds for Proctor. Protovansky, ball fake, drives up. Got it, Protovansky. Three seconds, two seconds, and see Bassett. That will count. It's just going to be off the mark. It's going to be 46-15 Proctor. And we'll have the players of the games announced for both sides, plus we'll have the that should be team number two presented the consolation gifts. You can see Ann Glazik Higgins and Bethany Glazik coming out. Again, this is the 21st year of the Ed Glazik tournament. It's the 50th year for this youth basketball tournament. And it was uh, a dominant performance by Proctor. So we'll get the handshakes. I think it was an uh, excellent effort by Neshebe, but you know you have to be very truthful about it, and there's always a better team in every game, and Proctor obviously was it, but Neshebe, great effort, good hustle, good sportsmanship. Number 25, So Bassett is the player of the game for Neshebe. He's going to go out and get his reward. Get your uh, translation prize. Thank you very much. How about a round of applause? Now, Ness should be as a team out there. And then they'll have the Proctor player of the game. And oh my goodness, you could choose everybody in out there in a maroon uniform. Player of the game. Forward number. 32 Farley will get it. So 32 Farley will get player of the game for Proctor. And again, stay tuned. We'll have more classic action for you on Munger Vision on Peg TV. This should be a good matchup. We have the Rutland Rec Bulls take on Rutland Town sixth grade matchup. So Jason Smith, Hill Franzoni, and John Fisk versus the Rutland Rec Bulls. Coach Todd so I'll go outside Mike now and we'll get the lineups from okay, Pat Lahan. One more announcement and uh, a special thanks and uh, congratulations to uh, a friend of mine, Jerry Munger, Munger Video Production, Channel 15, for the countless hours for <laughs> promoting not only this tournament, but also West Rutland sports throughout the season. His efforts, I really appreciate it. How about a round of applause for Jerry? Yep. 
All right, I had to be quiet. They're, they're sucking up to me, so I had to listen to that. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's an official. <laughs> that's more. We'll get the Rutland Rec Bulls, though. You see the Bulls obviously dressed in the red. And he'll. No River is Jason Smith, the head coach of the Rutland Town squad. At guard, number five, Quinn Curtis. And then we get the starting lineup from Pat Lyon. James Hewitt. At forward, number 32, Devon Maneri. And so you've got the starting lineup for the Bulls. And now for the Rutland Town Squad, they'll be in the white. Number 23, Franzoni. Number 30. Now the starters for Rotten Town. Number 11, Patrick Fields. At guard, number 14, Shane Everett. At forward, number 22, Yvonne Herrera. At guard, number 24, Dan Smith! And at center, number 32, Ethan Smith! Okay, gentlemen, if you're ready, let's get it on! That's ball up, and we are underway from the Glasgow Tournament 2009. The Bulls love the basketball. This is Hodgkiss with the basketball. Very good outside shooter, and he'll put the brakes on, slide the ball down, and he wants to cut back. Koch gets up, and no, it'll rattle around, but not down. There's the putback, no good. Woodard will fire it up, and boy, I tell you what, the Bulls on the glass having two, three, four opportunities come up empty-handed. Six-minute quarters, this is Ben Smith with the basketball. There is overtime if necessary. From the wing, the shot up, no good. And the rebound will be Smith up and no good. So each team getting an abundant of second and third opportunities. That's blocked shot pass actually came down. Hodgkiss will tip it to himself. He's got a two-on-one break right now. He'll cross over and can't get the finish on it. I'll tell you what, you don't get the blink at the start of these ball games. There's no feeling out process. At this age level, it's up and down the floor like a herd of buffalo. That's going to be way outside. And it'll come down, up and no. I can't keep track of how many missed shots we've had by both teams in this opening one minute of play. And this is the energy you feel when you get to the Glasgow Tournament. The best tournament, youth tournament there is in, well, in my opinion, probably in the world. But we'll cut it down to just the eastern seaboard. Up and no good. Now, there are a couple Smiths that play for Rutland Town, so don't think I'm repeating myself or stuttering when I say Smith and Smith. And this will be number 24 bringing the ball up, Ben Smith. And Ben Smith, very good outside shooter. They'll have to keep a body on him. And they didn't get out to challenge the shot, and he will rattle it around. The iron is not good. Hodgkiss will come down with the rebound, and Hodgkiss will not only get the rebound, he'll bring the ball down himself. He lost the handle on it, regained it, and now he has the ball slapped away. Good quickness out there on that defense by Rutland Town. Hodgkiss will put it up and no. Woodard puts it up a little hard and then it'll be Smith with the rebound. He'll get it out to Smith. That's that Smith the Smith I was talking about. And Rutland Town will slow it down now and Smith wide open this time looks not to take the shot from the outside. Now he was told to take the shot from the bench and long rebound will come out. It'll be controlled by number five Quinn Curtis. And Curtis will go back to Hodgkiss. 
I couldn't tell you. When we're going to see the first basket, we've had a lot of open looks. I don't know if it's jitters or nerves or what. They'll go baseline to Woodard. He's too far into the basket. He wants to curl back out, up off the glass, around the rim and out. That thing sat and dangled on the rim and just would not go down through it. It defied gravity. We are still scoreless. Three and a half minutes left in this opening quarter of play, and it's not because of lack of offense that we're scoreless. That's going to be up, and O'Rourke will miss the shot, and it's going to be a one and done. It's the rebound taken out of there by Hewitt. Hewitt will come back to Hodgkiss, number... I don't know what Hodgkiss is. 22, there we go. Hodgkiss on the run, left-hander, no good. Woodard, again, same deal. He got the rebound too far underneath the backboard. He brought it all the way back to the free-throw line, and then a three-second call. It was James Hewitt that got caught down inside the paint too long. And they have a break in the action. Is John Kelly... I thought I heard creaking. It was John Kelly bending down. It was his knees and stuff creaking, and then he tied his shoe, and he's okay now. And, of course, he does an excellent job, as always. And we're going to have Ben Smith and company looking to break this 0-0 score, or lack of score, actually. They wanted to go down inside to Smith. That was broken up by Woodard. Woodard on the run. And that's going to be backcourt. Yeah, he didn't clear it. Yeah, he wasn't really that close. as Maneri. Hadn't, caught, hadn't cleared the midcourt stripe, and we will have number 11 take the ball out of bounds, Patrick Fisk. So Fisk into Smith, 2.55 to go. I do not think we're going to play a scoreless first quarter. Honest to God, I don't. I think once the first basket goes, it's going to just be a barrage of points by both sides. Like I said they've generated good chances. That's just taken away. Just flat out taken away. We have an injured player. Yeah, he fell backwards and smacked his head on the hardwood floor, and yeah, that's a great job. The officials quickly stopping the action. Elberico comes in for Alvarez. It was Alvarez that was injured. And he came up under his own power and walked off. I think he's going to be okay. He's probably going to have a little egg on the back of his head where he hit the hardwood floor and Hotchkiss with the basketball. We are still scoreless with 2.34 to go. It's going to stay down this end. It went off from number 23 for Rutland Town, Charlie Franzoni. And the sub coming in right now is Kyle Lynch. Lynch coming in for Curtis for the Rutland Rec Bulls. Bulls in the red, Rutland Town in the white and blue uniforms. Yeah, that comes up top. And again, there have been open looks and second chances and third chances from bunny range, from bunny shots. Hodgkiss puts it up, no good. Look at that offensive rebound, no, a little flip shot. Another chance, no good. I gotta tell you, I hope this is just experiencing cold shooting and this isn't what they do all the time. This is gonna be a long shot. Take him up short. That shot was taken by Jake Alberico from beyond the arc. And that's going to be Woodard with the grab. He came back against the press to make the grab. Woodard gets that basketball under control. He'll flip it out on the side to Lynch. Lynch on the drive. Gives it to Hotchkiss. He'll go up off the glass and in. And we've got some points. Two to nothing. The Bulls with the lead with the Hotchkiss basket. On the drive. He took it hard to the hole. That was Lackney. Kieran and Lackney. And two shots coming up for Lackney, and again, I like that aggressive move he made to the basket. And that stopped the clock with 1.49 to go. And it should be, yeah, 2-0, the Bulls. And that'll be just a little bit short. And he'll be a little bit off of that one, too. I was kind of watching him put the score on the scoreboard jet, and I swear I saw a basket. There we go. I think they're just screwing with my head. It's 2-0, the Bulls. Hotchkiss up ahead, and Hewitt brings the pass along the baseline. That's going to be a turnaround jumper. No good. Smith took the shot. Well, no, I want to double-check myself. I'm sorry. They'll work the ball down inside, and there's the steal by Lynch. This is Hotchkiss, I know for sure, with the basketball. I'll catch up on my roster in just a second. 
Maneri on the run, guns it in there. Devin Maneri has the ball went around, around, and in, and it will become a 4 0 Bulls lead over the Rutland Town Chargers. This time he passed up the shot, Lackney at the free throw line. That's a three ball from the elbow. It's going to be off to the left, and you can see Hewitt come down with the basketball. He'll bring it back to Hodgkiss. Yeah, it takes me a quarter to get the names down. That's why sometimes the camera works worse than usual. Up and no. That was Hotchkiss from the outside. Franzoni got the rebound. He'll all at the basketball. And we got a foul as Woodard lost his balance, went to the floor. And what happened there was he got in the way of El Barico. And El Barico goes over the top of him to the floor. And El Barico's okay. As Isaiah Ashcroft Billings, number 50 into the basketball game for Rutland Town, making his first appearance. And that will come into El Barico. El Barico will bring it back to Smith. He's open. He puts it up, and he will be a little bit too strong. And here comes Hotchkiss up ahead to Lynch. Lynch trying to chase it down. Up and got it. 6 nothing. the Bulls. They're on a 6-0 run here in the first quarter. And El Barico will swing the pass out to Smith. Smith wants to go down inside to Franzoni. He'll duck underneath the defender and draw the foul. He attacked Maneri on the move in the low post, and two shots coming up for Franzoni. So Charlie Franzoni at the line. And Quinn Curtis at the scores table for the Bulls. He'll be checking in on the second shot. So Franzoni looking to get Rutland Town on the board. Oh, just missed. I thought he had it when he left his hand, but he just missed. They arrange Maneri and Hotchkiss down on the blocks. And put Hewitt and Curtis up top. That'll go around the rim and it'll go for the zone. He's trying to follow his shot up. Comes out of it with the pack with the ball, puts it up and no. Great hustle by Franzoni. Hotchkiss will glance at the clock. 11 seconds on the scoreboard. Franzoni will cross over, get to the elbow, pull the ball back out, put up the three. Oh! Halfway down, pop back out. Lynch, time running down. Nope. Wave it off. Nope. But it's going to be a 6 0 Bulls lead at the end of one quarter of play over Rutland Town from the Glossic Tournament 2009 on Munger Vision. Rutland Town basketball, they'll have it underway. This is El Barico with the basketball, number 30. To O'Rourke off the window, no good. Ball swatted at, and it'll become Bulls basketball. So again, they've done a good job on the glass the Bulls have here. Lynch pops out, Lynch open on the arc, pass up the three-point shot, could have gone baseline, elected not to do that, brings it back to the center of the floor, fades from the free throw line, and picks it off the front of the rim. Here comes the Chargers charging down the court, trying to fall, and almost got the shot to drop. That's the quick push. That was Fisk to get the ball down the floor in a real hurry. And Fisk at the line looking for Rutland Town's first points. And so Fisk will be lefty. He'll put it up with the left hand. A lot of spin on the ball. And well, he had the right length and hark and juice on it. He's just got to move a little bit to his left here. And that'll be short. Rebound will come down to Curtis. Curtis outlets to Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss front court. Lynch. Yeah, again, he aggressively attacked the basket. And it's going to be a foul on number 30, El Barico. And it's official. It is on Jake Alberico. It's on the floor prior to the shot. Possession ball. Hotchkiss will take a ball of bounds on the baseline. And they're going to set the box formation up to bring the ball into play. They're going to swing it all the way out to Curtis. Hodgkiss looking to make the move against Fisk. And Fisk, yeah. I think what Hodgkiss thought was that the defender gave him a new possession. And they didn't see it that way, and they called double dribble on him. And so El Barico to Fisk. He'll put it up, and nope, a little bit off the mark. Up, and that was Smith, Ethan Smith, number 32 down there. Who had the put back and off the foot, off one of the players for Rutland Town. The ball will go to the Bulls. And Rutland Town going to change things up. They're going to do a press. And, and it worked. They'll get the turnover. Yeah, so it's going to be Rutland Town ball. They're only down six, which is two possessions, two three point shots. And they really have to just kind of settle down. 
Smith open, puts it on the floor. Let's the defense, oh, nice little drop pass, and then nowhere to go. The ball got the foul called, and I believe Lynch will pick up the foul. What did Rosario also? It's going to be on Lynch the foul, and there'll be two shots coming up for Rutland Town. They've been to the line three or four times, and they've yet to convert any of those into points. As 32, Devin Maneri at the scores table getting set to come in here for the Rutland Rec Bulls. Well, Brico with that practice shot in the beginning. And Woodard will take a breather, number 10, for the Bulls. And so Alberico, nope. Again, they've got Hewitt on the boards to Hodgkiss, but Rutland Towns had numerous opportunities to get on the scoreboard. Hodgkiss, baseline, pass, weak side, shot up, no good. Hewitt, no good. Rutland Town with the rebound. They're looking to out the ball to Alberico. He'll go by Lynch on the far side of the Hinchy Jim and Lynch. Dog and him staying there. S couldn't save it. Great hustle by Lynch. That's Kyle Lynch. He's pretty wound up. He's got a lot of crank in him there as he got it down the floor and made a heck of a play and almost came up with a steal. There's the shot, no good. I'll tell you, again, they had the perfect shot. They had the big man inside, number 32, Ethan Smith. And he just didn't convert the bunny shot. Now, usually cold shooting like that will solve itself. It will turn itself around as the game goes along. Curtis had it blocked out of bounds. It should stay with the Bulls. I believe Smith got the block. And now Ben Smith coming into the block. Game here, 24 for Rutland Town. As Lynch will take the ball out of bounds. Maneri got it. He came open on that right side of the paint. Nobody switched around and guarded, put a guard on him, and he made an easy little kiss off the glass and in to go eight nothing the Bulls. Ben Smith, nope, front rim to three ball, and O'Rourke got in there number 22 and couldn't control it. Lynch high off the glass, set on the rim, no good. Here comes Fisk. Fisk wants to push the tempo the other way. Fisk. With one more man to beat, we'll put it up, and no good. No whistle on the play. Bodies hit the deck, and again, Smith with two chances, didn't convert either. 3.48 to go, and the Bulls still pitching the shutout. Hodgkiss wanted to go down inside. That wasn't there. It wasn't available. He brought it back outside. Curtis to Hodgkiss. Hodgkiss directs traffic. We'll take it to the hole up and put a spin on it, and then get the ball to cooperate, and there's the pass up ahead. It'll be tipped. It'll come down to Alvarez, number 14. Lynch at the deck. Bodies on the floor. Fouls being called. Okay, so Hewitt got called for the foul. And Smith will be going to the line. So number 32 for Rutland Town, Ethan Smith <clears throat> at the line right now. And the big man looks, fires, got it, they're on the board. That took them a quarter and a half to score, but they are only down by seven points. That's the beauty of it. And Curtis had the ball come to him, we'll go to Hotchkiss. There's the screen set. You see Hodgkiss looking, waiting for the play to develop. Lynch comes all the way across the baseline on a couple of screens, will drive up. Ball stripped out of his hands, goes on to bounce off from Lynch, and becomes Rutland Town basketball. And now they will allow the substitution to take place as Charlie Franzoni, 23, will come in for 32, Ethan Smith. That's a Rutland Town change. And Ben Smith. Goes to O'Rourke, he'll turn high off, high off the glass and miss the shot. Hotchkiss will come down with the rebound. He has quarterbacked the team very well. They're up eight to one right now. Hotchkiss looks, Lynch's time was covered on that cut. Hotchkiss to the free throw line, nowhere to go with the basketball. Tipped around, picked up by Maneri off the glass and a nice job by Maneri on a broken play. He made something big out of it. 10 to one, Rutland Town down by nine. Rourke will put it on the floor once, a little hook shot, and creative shot 
Here comes another one and done. It was a one shot and out, and here comes the Bulls. See Hodkins being very patient, letting the whole play set up in front of him. Yeah, that's what happened. Five second defensive call as Hodgkins never advanced the ball forward. He was very patient, like I said, but there's a limit to patience. I've hit it many times in my life, but. So again, with two minutes to go in the half, for one time with just one point on the board. But they're only down by nine. There's a steal by Hewitt. Hewitt with the steal. Going to dunk it. No, he goes up for the layup. No good. Ball tipped around and kept alive by Lynch. Lynch will pull the ball back out to Curtis. He'll swing it over to Hewitt. And that's going to be Lackney that almost had the steal. He stays with the ball and it comes back down to Curtis. Curtis over the top to Hotchkiss. Up on the run and no. Rebound up and no. Battle under the boards and we'll have a foul called. Now Franzoni called for the fall. Yeah, they're gonna have the ball taken out of bounds by Fisk. As Franzoni tied his shoe. And that, okay, that's what they're trying to get their attention for. It's the seventh team fall, so it's the one and one now. So Rutland Town has Franzoni at the line. So, so Franzoni was fouled. That was the whole thing. Okay. I'm with it now. As Franzoni was fouled with a minute 28 to go. And that's going to be a little off the mark. And actually, a violation. He didn't hit the rim. And the ball will go out of bounds. And that'll be some press action now in the backcourt by Rutland Town. Lynch, yep. Yeah. Lynch quickly over the timeline gets the ball up to Hodgkiss. Hodgkiss. Below the free throw line will spin and jump ball. And they'll get set. And they look, they look, and Maneri will make the grab, step to the hole, dump the pass off. Great pass. Lynch, no good. Ball tipped around, will come down. Lackney with it. Here's footsteps behind him. He'll go back and get the basketball now. And Franzoni will put his head down and pull his way through like a fullback. They'll let him play through it. Less than a minute to go. Maneri turns. Spin move. No good. Ball will be hammered out of bounds. And we have a change. Alvarez coming out of the ball. No, it's not Alvarez. That's Caldwell coming out of the ball game for Rutland Town. I didn't even see him go in the game. To tell you the truth, it happened so fast. As Ashcroft Billings comes in the ballgame, number 50 for Rutland Town. 46 seconds to go on the game clock in the second quarter. But Hewitt got a piece of it, comes back to Lackney, gets his balance, spun his wheels, will stop at the elbow, flip the ball back to Smith. He'll put it up and nope. Still searching for that shot from the outside and then will not be touched by a bowl. The ball will go out of bounds and Rutland Town will go back into the press. As Maneri takes the dribble, brings it back to Hotchkiss. Fisk on Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss working his way up to the arc. We'll get the ball along the baseline up, and I'll tell you, a great play. They just didn't execute. Jump ball, bodies flying everywhere, and Maneri holding the back of his head, and he gets up and he says he's okay. They check with him, and he says, ouch, but I'm okay. 16 seconds to go, and we'll see if they can get a good shot off here. Rutland Town brought it down to eight seconds, seven seconds. They're gonna have to work inside here. There they go, they got penetration, and they're gonna turn it over with this. As the buzzer runs out, they turn the ball over, and it's gonna be a 10 to one Bulls lead at halftime over Rutland Town from the Glazik tournament. All right, so you can see it's going to be Bulls basketball. Come on, Ethan, get the passing way. To just holding up, let some of the players in the Knicks ball game get by the help, help. spot of the ball. Hotchkiss will bring it into play. Well, in town, they, they're only down nine, considering they only scored one point. They had open looks. They just didn't convert them. Well, like I said, 
they uh, usually a cold shooting team that will they'll work, work through that, but I'm not sure <laughs> that's going to happen here. Fisk with the basketball, he'll bring it up and give it off to Smith. Smith looking for that three-point range will be off the mark again. Hotchkiss had the ball delivered to him off that carom off the iron, and he'll bring it up the floor and set up the offense now. Works off the screen by Woodard, lost the dribble. Woodard. Brought all the way from one elbow back between circles and gives it off to Hodgkiss. Hodgkiss looks. Wanted to dump the ball inside, wasn't there. Now he'll explode to the paint and spin it off the glass and in. Well, that was just breaking down your defender out there. That was a good play by Hodgkiss. And Fisk with the basketball. Patrick Fisk will call the play out. Rutland Town, they let the screen develop. There's the roll to the basket, and then they overshot the mark. Saved by Alvarez. And they'll work it back around. The play was there. The pass was just probably fingertips too long. Up and oh. Again, it was a good shot. It just didn't drop. That was a good drive that didn't drop. I've never seen in a quarter, one, two, two and a half quarters of play. So many missed shots on high percentage shots. Smith had it knocked away, caught it, shot it, no good. Rolled off the rim and it'll come down to Hotchkiss. Woodard was also there. Hotchkiss again has been very disciplined in running the offense. He'll be matched up defensively by Fisk out there. Hotchkiss will go back and the ball will go out of bounds. Last touch by Rotten Town. That was Patrick Fisk. With the touch, Maneri, after getting some ice on the back of his head, will come back in the ball game for the Bulls. So Devin Maneri, number 32 out there, in red, as Hewitt will come off the floor. Lynch attacks the hole, underhand shot, no good, and chased down by Maneri. That's O'Rourke on Maneri, and that's going to be tipped over, and Lynch fades and fires and got it. The lead goes to 14 to 1 now, the Rutland Rec Bulls with the lead. It's Ben Smith. Curtis comes out to defend him, number five. They'll give it off to Fisk. Fisk in the corner on the far side of the Hinchy Gym. Gives the ball. Again, it was the right idea. The pass just a tad bit too long. It was a good plan. They just missed it by inches. And they're going to bring in number 23, Charlie Franzoni. He's going to come and replace Ethan Smith. Fisk releases his open, passes up the three ball, gives it off to Ben Smith. Ben Smith, ball fake, baseline, puts it up, and got it! Now, maybe he'll... Yeah, they want the press after the made basket. They're trying to pick up the intensity. Hotchkiss just delivers, so it goes in to in, and missed it. They want to get it up to Smith. Smith swings it out to Fisk. Fisk on the run. Fisk inside the paint. Fisk stops, pops, and drops it. And all of a sudden, they found their offense, and they're down only nine. 14 to 5. The Bulls with the lead over Rutland Town. Lynch drops it down inside to Benary. He wants to put it on the floor. Wheel, jump, and got it. What a little work inside by Maneri. Like a tank down inside. 16 5. That answers that 4 0 run that the Chargers had put together. And I think Franzoni, that yeah, went out from Woodard. As Franzoni tried to roll baseline, the ball went out from Woodard out of bounds. Well, they had a play set up, and Woodard can't save it. They look to get the ball into Franzoni on that inbounds play, and it was knocked away, and it's going to stay with Rutland Town. Good job by Woodard reacting. And Rutland Town, a lot of changes here. And I'll start with the guy going to be handed the ball, Jake Alberico. And Jake Alberico is going to have the basketball handed to him. He's got Ben Smith still out there, Caldwell, Lackney, and Franzoni. And Caldwell looks to bring it back to Ben Smith. And again, he's open from the elbow and nope. Trying to zero in on that three-point shot and spinning out of the pack with it is Lynch. And Lynch has got a lot of court on the run. Got it. He didn't shoot so late in the drive that it gave the defender a chance to get back on the play. 18 to 5 now. The Bulls push the lead back to 13. So they responded to the 4-0 run by the Chargers with their own 4-0 run. And Curtis 
Got the steal. Quinn Curtis stop block. Shot comes down. Lackney with it. Handed off to Smith. Smith made the block of the shot. Caldwell looked at the basket, squared up, but didn't take the shot. And Smith will keep it alive. Caldwell will put it up and be off to the left. There's Lackney coming in. Got the rebound into the hands of Woodard. Woodard up over the top of the high arcing pass, picked off by Alberico. The Caldwell up and no, that might have been tipped. I think that might have been tipped by Maneri. Up and down the floor they go with a minute 26 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, they're going to pull it back out. They'll reset the offense. There's a the screen set for Lynch and got it. Tell you what, Lynch let some uh, shots go that you kind of, when he takes them, you kind of go, what in the heck? And then all of a sudden they swish. So it must be his style. Benton Smith will get it off. El Barico with Lynch on him. That's the big size advantage for Lynch on that. El Barico can't get the shot off over the top of him, Caldwell. And there's Lynch on the top of the defense with that long wingspan. He'll make the steal. He'll cross over and off the glass. This time it won't go. Picked up by Hodges. He'll step through the defenders and miss the shot. What a step through, though, that was. Ben Smith with the basketball. 44 seconds to go in third quarter. And we have a timeout taken by Rutland Town as they're down 20-5 to with just 43 seconds to go in the third. Anonymous with West Rutland basketball. John Center on the left and Carl Serrani on the right. Both as players. Carl Serrani as the varsity girls coach. And of course, John Center ran the Glossic tournament for years and years. Good to see him back in the gym. He didn't get a chance to come over next year and take any of the action in. But again, two, uh, two guys that have helped put West Rutland basketball in their different ways on the map here. Great crowds on hand for the opening day here of the tournament. They get the ball to Franzoni and Woodard, Woodard comes out. I tell you what, Woodard has played a great ball game for the Bulls. And in, in kind of a quiet way out there, he's been aggressive defensively. He's made some offensive things happen. He's been big on the boards. Done a nice job. Franzoni muscling it up. Got fouled. Should be a couple shots coming up for Franzoni. Yeah, so there will be two shots coming up for Franzoni. That will stop the clock at 28.8 seconds. Boy, Franzoni a little short again. Got to hit the rim this time. It'll be a violation. The ball automatically go to the Bulls. Winner of this game will go on deeper into the tournament. Lackney got in there with a good box out. Franzoni with the ball. We'll give it back to Lackney. He'll put his shoulder down and you can see how strong Woodard was to hold his ground. Here comes Lynch. Lynch out of the pot. I'll tell you about Lynch. He had rushed that one. Hotchkiss right there put us up and in. Nice job by Hotchkiss. And we have an injured player down on the floor. And it could be Lynch. I'm looking down there and he's holding his head. They shouldn't let him get right up like that. So I'll say Lynch did not start the ball game. But man, has he made a huge impact coming in off the bench. As Hewitt will come into the ball game now for the Bulls. Yeah, and they're going to go zone defense right now for the last 18 seconds. The Bulls will. Lackney, baseline, Lackney up, and I'll tell you what, creative, didn't work, jump ball. And on the jump ball, the ball will go to the Bulls. They'll roll it into Hodgkins, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds. It'll count if it goes, and it's just going to miss. So. The Bulls, one quarter away from moving on into the Glasgow Tournament, deeper here in 2009. If Rutland Town's going to make any chance of a comeback, they're down by 17. They better make it happen real fast, real quick here. Alberico through the paint. Got the shot up on the run. Lackney will put it up. He'll miss. Woodard had it lost. It'll come up, and Franzoni with a hook shot. No good. Smith will be fouled. Not Franzoni, I'm sorry. So Franzoni going to the line, and that cold shooting continues by Rutland Town. And Franzoni up there, and they need these free throws. They need points in any shape or form. They can get them. I'm not sure. There's two shots why he was allowed to come in on the first shot. 
on a substitution. I don't think it was fifth foul, no? I don't think he was injured. All right. And that's going to come all the way back to Alvarico, and then he got fouled from behind. And it's going to be a push. And that is only going to be the fourth foul. Yeah, no, no bonus yet. Nobody near the bonus yet. Actually, there's been no fouls called on Rutland Town in the second half. And that's not officiating. It can be just lack of aggressive play. And you can see that Lynch back in there for the Bulls. Remember, he left in what appeared to be an injury. And Alvarez lost his footing, lost the basketball, and Woodard will pick it up. Woodard, will he dunk it? No, nope, he won't get a chance to, and he got ran over from behind by Lackney. And Woodard getting up, and he is, he is fired up. And it's on the floor, no shot coming up, and they'll be taken out of bounds. That's going to be the first foul in Rotten Town here in the second half. What happened to Lynch? He crossed the line when he get the trying to throw the ball in bounds. As Smith, 24, Ben Smith, 24, coming back in for Rutland Town along with Fisk, number 11, Patrick Fisk. Yeah, and then call the play. I see Ben Smith. He's going to run the point now. He's back in the ball game. He had a good break, good breather on the bench, and Fisk with the catch. And can't get past Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss physically just strong when he gets on you with that body. Alberico stepped toward the basket, kicked the ball back out. This is from the baseline at Smith. It's off the front of the rim. Franzoni will chase it down at the elbow. He'll put the ball on the floor, try to go baseline, and the ball slapped out of his hands. It's going to stay with Rutland Town. And so again, Rutland Town running out of time here to make something happen in this ball game. They're in the fourth quarter, below five minutes to go, down by 17. Lackney plans to pivot foot, waits for Smith to come up top. Ben Smith with the basketball. You see Curtis came all the way out with him, and Ben Smith open, looking, 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 and still searching for that shot. Hotchkiss with the ball, and looking more and more and more like the Bulls are going to move on to the next level here of competition at the Glossic Tournament. Hodgkiss, pass tipped, going to be picked up. Got the ball back from his teammate that was up. Hodgkiss free throw line, got it. Like the way he just decided on that mid-range jump shot when all the defenders had the momentum going back to catch him, just to stop and pull up, and he had a wide open look at the basket and made it. 24 to five now, Rutland Town looking at a 19 point deficit, and we've just gone below four minutes to play. And Alvarico able to keep the ball through the traffic. Lackney will save it from going out of bounds and give it back to Smith. Smith will ball fake. Defender in the air. Smith up and no. Long rebound off the long shot. Saved by Maneri. He'll get it back to Woodard. Woodard now to Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss up ahead and they'll be out of bounds. Right idea. He was trying to get to Quinn Curtis. And we're going to have a timeout taken by the Bulls. They're up 24 to 5 over Rutland Town in the fourth quarter. So a Bulls timeout. We'll see what happens here after that timeout taken. And they'll get the pass up to Fisk. Hotchkiss gamble. Almost got the steal to go baseline. Up and no. One more time. No. One more time. Oh my goodness. I don't know how they can't make the basket. I feel bad for them because they're doing everything right except making the baskets. Smith with the rebound will get it off to Smith. That's that Smith to Smith connection. That's what they want to do with the ball. They want to dump it down inside. Wasn't there? Lynch tipped it. Alberico will come over and chase it down. O'Rourke was also there. And O'Rourke's going to come to the wing there. He gets the basketball. He's open. Wants to go baseline. Works his way along the baseline. And that was creative. Hodgkins saves it back to Smith. Got it. And that comes 24 to 7. It's just the seventh point of the game for Rutland Town. Woodard came back in the middle of the floor against the press, and that's where the big man should be. And a double dribble, wow. And they're gonna go side out. As Hewitt is gonna come back in the ball game. I'm not sure who Hewitt's gonna replace. He's gonna have Woodard's spot, so James Hewitt gonna get a little 
action in now as Woodard will take a breather. And they'll get the ball down inside Smith to Smith, and the shot was partially tipped. Hewitt will grab the loose basketball. He'll have it taken away by Fisk. He'll launch it up. No. Well, he had to rush the shot if he was going to take it because he was surrounded by taller players. If he waits a few seconds longer, they're going to be in position to block the shot. Now go out of bounds off from Rutland Town and stays with the Bulls. Lynch calls for the break. To Maneri. Maneri working against O'Rourke. Yeah, and they're going to foul on O'Rourke. Yeah, so they'll take the ball out of bounds. And coming in for Rutland Town will be Isaiah Ashcroft Billings. As Alberico will come out of the ballgame now for Rutland Town. Maneri with the grab, Lynch with the shot, and I think he was staying. He traveled, okay. He, he caught the ball and traveled. And Ben Smith and company need to make up 17 points in a minute 50 seconds. Smith will give it off to Fisk. He'll roll it down inside to Smith. He'll go off the rim. No good. Ball tipped around. Comes back down to Fisk. He'll put it up off the glass. A little bit hard. There's O'Rourke. Got it. O'Rourke will get the bucket. Now the press has got to be aggressive. They need a lot of turnovers in a short period of time. Hotchkiss. Front court. Gets the ball down to Monero. He'll make the grab. Wheel to the hole. Put the shot. And get it. Beautiful job. All that motion gyrating down toward the basket. Always funneling down toward the hoop on their offense. Ashcroft Billings wants to give the ball back to Ben Smith. Smith in the corner, nowhere to shoot. Will take it to the hole, split the defense, and Maneri will strip the basketball away. And that's just about all she wrote. 26, uh, yeah, carried the basketball. He went to make the pass. He came up on a high dribble. So, yeah, with a minute to go and 26 to 9. Rutland down, down to the Rutland Rec Bulls. So the Rec Bulls become the first Rutland Rec team to go on to the next round. Good defense by Hewitt. He was playing in front of Smith. Saved by Hotchkiss. Comes down to Smith. He'll give it off to Ashcroft. Billings blocked from behind by Lynch. Right into the hands of Hotchkiss. On the break. Everybody out in front. Hotchkiss going to take it all the way up and got it. There were four red jerseys running shoulder to shoulder to shoulder down the floor. Good hustle. 28 to 9 now, Rutland Town down, and it's going to be up, and that was partially blocked. Woodard tips it out. Woodard he tripped up coming out of the pack, and he's going to be okay, and O'Rourke will both be okay as they went leg to leg. And I'm looking at the scoreboard. No, nobody's in a bonus situation yet. So Lynch will take the ball out of bounds. Shane Alvarez, Rutland Town, just checks in. And they'll go into backcourt to, to, to Curtis Quinn, and he'll give it off to Hotchkiss. Again, at the conclusion of this ball game, you'll have the players of the game selected, one from each team. Hotchkiss inside, and he'll get it. When he goes one-on-one, -on -one, so he has the ability to break it down. They were very disciplined in running through the whole offense throughout the whole contest. And then the last few trips down, he has shown you his stuff. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Fisk all the way in, and he'll get it. Fisk with the basket. Two seconds, one second, and that's going to be the ball game. Just missed it. 30 to 11, Rutland Town, Rutland Rec Bulls with the win over Rutland Town. Okay, great job. Rutland Rec Bulls will be back in the Rutland Town. Thank you. And after congratulations, we'll blow. So we'll get the handshakes, and then we'll have the players of the game, and then the consolation gifts handed out to Rutland Town. So there's the handshakes, a good sportsmanship. Now we'll get to the hot-looking women out there at center court. Ian Glazik Higgins and Beth Glazik. Okay. 
Go ahead, our Rutland town. And Rutland town will go and get their consolation gifts. They get a good round of applause, too. And again, just part of the whole aura here of the Glossic tournament. Uh, you never go away empty handed. John Kelly. Okay, the player of the game for Rutland Town. Rutland Town player of the game. Card number 24, Ben Smith. Ben Smith will be the player of the game for Rutland Town. So congratulations to Ben. Okay, Rutland Red Bulls will be back, but today's player of the game, forward number 32, Devon Maneri. Devin Maneri will be player of the game. So congratulations to those players of the game, and we'll be back with more Glossic tournament action on Munger Vision on okay, Peg TV at a later date. Next game will be started shortly, but... Uh,